So you've seen your friend's penises? Oh, yeah. many times, many times. <laughs> uh, me and Scar have not crossed that boundary. Yeah, <laughs> One of the weirdest things I saw was you could get used underwear in a vending machine because Japan, right? You know, oh there's, there's a- uh... And where did you see this machine? Huh? Yeah, where exactly? <laughs> where exactly? Hey guys, welcome to the OTV podcast. This is episode 22. I'm your host for today, uh, Gant slash Giga, and I'm with the boys. We're, we're using that. We're, you, we're using that. <laughs> that, that was that's free. <laughs> <laughs> so like Gaunt, Gaunt. Yeah, Gaunt. Or, or or Gigak, whatever oh, whatever yeah. you prefer. Or Gig. If that's, I've never that's heard easy. of someone's name as Gaunt because I was talking to Scar. I thought that like, was Grant. <laughs> <He's> like, <"That's, laughs> I Grant swear to up. God, like, that is <laughs> yeah. that's a more normal name. Yeah, but it I is. Remember. It is. Everyone thinks it's Grant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually like a running joke in my just just life. It's just my life right mm -hmm. at this point. So. Yeah, where is, is that an English name? No, it's Thai. So Thai. Oh, I was, okay. I'm like fully Thai. Both my parents are Thai, but mm -hmm. I was like born and raised in the UK. Uh -huh. um, so a lot of a lot of Thai people, a lot of like, you know, Asian people that I know chose like, you know, Western names, but right. I kept my Thai name because I think Gant's pretty close to Grant. It's so very it's like, close. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still like unique enough that, you know, people still remember it easily. So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, we're joined by Garnt or Giga... Gigak. Yeah. Gigak. Yeah. Okay. I was wrong about that one because I was like, maybe it's Gig UK because he's from the he, UK. He gaslit me into thinking that wasn't how to say your name. I've watched your stuff for so long. He's like, no, that's not how you say it. I'm like, oh, wow. oh shit, okay. It's not his name was Grant, bro. Uh, okay. Not this is enough, like apparently. every common mispronunciation of both my username and my oh, name. This, this is great. This is great. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gigak is from the Trash Taste podcast, which is, yes. I would say, the premier podcast if you're into anime or Japanese culture. They're the number one anime podcast that doesn't talk about anime. <laughs> <laughs> they stopped after like episode four, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, I mean like we, I think it's like a running joke for us that we are an anime podcast that don't talk about anime anymore. Mm. I mean, I rarely get to talk about anime with my boys. And the reason for that is because we both started off as like anime YouTubers. So we thought it was a good idea to market ourselves as an anime podcast even mm -hmm. though like the the goal from the beginning just was just to like be able to talk about anything and you know that's kind of what we do now right. luckily yeah because after you talk about like your favorite shows you know from a childhood current shows yeah what do you talk about after exactly. right? it's so hard to make a podcast about anime mm -hmm. weekly right because you just you just run out of topics and like me i watch anime basically for a living and there are times where i just I fucking hate anime, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. there, there are times when you burn out and you just don't, you, you want to talk about anything but anime. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of why we made the podcast. Right. Was it was meant to be like an outlet to talk about anime, but also anything else we want to like shoot shit about. And yeah, it's kind of like blown up over the last two years. We did not expect it to get to like this, le this, this level or this kind of size. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been pretty insane. Yeah. <laughs> so Probably a lot more anime watchers during the pandemic. They're like, oh, I'm kind of bored. What is this no, 2D of cartoon that's, oh, it's kind of good. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that and VTubing, yeah, blew up during the oh, pandemic. Oh yeah, VTubing, yeah. VTubing blew up during the pandemic. I mean, uh, that kind of made sense, right? That, that does mm -hmm. make sense. But I feel like streamers in general, like kind of like, they got like a huge boost in viewership. Yeah. But basically anyone in our, in like the online space Space, I feel because everyone was just stuck inside and needed entertainment. Yeah, streaming was definitely one of those things that just benefited from the, the, the actual stats. Was I think for the two the two month period of like 2019, yeah, and between like January to March, I think Twitch numbers went up on the website by 30 percent. Yeah, by the end of the year it was like 100 percent. Yeah, it's exactly. really obvious because when you go. Now and you ask some, your Uber driver or anyone if they know what Twitch is, they do. It's like a household name where oh. before. Oh, people only knew about YouTube. It right, was like, right. Streaming yeah. was a weird thing. Yeah, everyone was like that Gordon Ramsay clip. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like what? What the hell's Twitch? Right? <laughs> yeah, like people don't know the intricacy, but they're like, oh yeah, I heard of Twitch. Yeah, and it's getting um, pretty popular, and a lot of people like want to be streamers. Now it's like, oh, I could I could try streaming like, if I buy this and that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it feels like 
for me like because i'm primarily primarily a youtuber but it mm. feels like i don't know if it's true or not but it feels like the barrier of entry for twitch was just like a lot lower than mm -hmm. it was for youtube because youtube got to a point where the quality was so high that it was kind of like intimidating to a point to sure. try and make content that was successful mm -hmm. you can still do it but i feel like some people like you know mr beast and all that have like raise the bar of quality now but like i feel twitch is now getting to that same level with you know stuff like ludwig is doing with like stuff stuff that you guys are doing which is like a lot of high profile events that were just wasn't as prevalent or maybe maybe i just wasn't paying attention like a few years ago mm -hmm. yeah uh streaming has definitely been more elevated lately but i yeah. would still say it is harder to be a good youtuber than it is to be a good streamer like I have more respect for YouTubers than I have streamers, but maybe it's because I'm in the Bro, scene. I have respect for Twitch streamers, man. You, <laughs> it you might be like that. <laughs> it's like, you know how the sausage is made? Yeah. And like, when you see someone like doing the, the cheesy things, you're like, yeah. I don't fucking respect you, bro. But with uh, YouTubers, you're kind of on the outside. It's like, wow, this is really cool. I think for streamers, a lot of their hustle is getting to the point where they're really successful. And right. then they can kind of autopilot the top end. Yeah. And like, you don't, like, it's not that difficult. Like, the difficult part about streaming a lot of times is the stuff you do outside the stream. Mm -hmm. I like, streaming is easy. I can breathe and stream. But, like, right. the, like, keeping up with, like, socials, the making sure you're on top of all your other, like, bullshit, yeah. that's, like, the hard part. If you're streaming eight hours a day and then going to do, like, YouTube, TikTok, a bunch of socials, thinking about, like, weird stuff to do with your future stuff, yeah. that's when the difficult part is, I think. I think the maintenance is a lot easier than YouTube. Yeah, because, like, I, I look at you guys and you guys are, like, it seems like you guys are like constantly on the grind even if you're not streaming which you guys are streaming like a lot of hours you guys are doing stuff outside the streams and everything like that i can just take a break from uploads if i really want to and it doesn't affect me too badly mm -hmm. you know it just like for me it felt like i respect anyone who just has that much of a like a mentality to be able to grind it out and so yeah respect guys yeah yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> nice to hear yeah. <laughs> I, I still like YouTubers more because <laughs> YouTubers are definitely more well adjusted in my right. opinion in, in terms of their like work well, I'm a loser yeah I agree with that <laughs> <laughs> just streamers are like oh my god here's my number and you're constantly looking at other people's number like when it comes right. to like even podcasts like some podcasts have more numbers some podcasts left yours but I'm never like oh yeah I'm better than him right, or like, right. I'm, I'm, like this guy's better than me with streaming it's like here's your worth as a human being <laughs> displayed yeah. for everyone to see <laughs> right. if you ever get in beef with someone they can just like drop their viewer number on you and I've seen like um, like people would insult each other based on their view count I'm like that's like yeah. the lowest Bro, blow we, we, you we've go. gone back to like high school now yeah. <laughs> no, it's <is. laughs> like, just like god that's where most streamers are insecure about right like, right right shit. Is that, is that why you feel like there's a pressure to like constantly be on that grind? And if you like see a drop in viewership, does it like really affect you a lot? Uh, it definitely used to. I still don't like stream with my view count. Like I would say 80% of streamers don't look at their view count yep, when they're live. Cause that number goes up. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm being really funny. Yeah. And you keep it up and it goes down. Like I'm the, I'm the, I'm the lamest guy in the world kind of. Yep, yeah. it's <laughs> awful. All right, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because I started like dabbling in streaming mm -hmm. like recently and the live viewership count, that's just like such a vibe killer for me. Oh yeah. my God, your mood goes up and down with your view count and I fucking hated it. I was <laughs> like, oh shit, man, this is, this is bad for my mental health. Holy crap. But uh, I'm glad to know that you do that as well. Yeah, everyone does it. That's why like we all hide it. Right. There are some people who do it and I'm like, you guys are psychos. Bro. Oh, I know people who do it in our group. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, so I know like what's working, but like, yeah. it's a vibe killer for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how like you micromanage that vibe. I don't know. Yeah. Some some streamers are built, just built different, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I love about YouTube is I think it's more rewarding to be creatively fulfilling. Yeah. So like, I feel like each video can be like unique and cool. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's hard to, to do that with streaming. I think right. like LUD has, has a good formula for how they transition the stream into the, the thing and then toast also with that yeah. but even then I feels like you're kind of doing a formula to do, be on two things as opposed to doing like what's best for just one yeah yeah and I feel like YouTube is great for that but like streaming at some point I think it's difficult to be creatively fulfilled just streaming I think a lot of right. streamers have like an end game goal of like not streaming yeah but I feel like YouTubers are just like 
they're just chill. They're, they're pretty chill about it. I don't know what they're saying. Yeah, I don't know what the end game for like YouTubers is. It used to be that a lot of the end game for YouTubers was to like to stop doing YouTube, go to like television, and everything like that. But now mm -hmm. it just feels like everyone wants to be like the YouTubers. Like even like TikTokers who blow up, it feels like TikTokers want to be like transfer their audience to YouTube in order to like legitimize themselves, even mm -hmm. though TikTok's like the new hot and coming platform now. Yeah, it's weird because like TikTokers would try and stream and they would go from like 10 million followers on TikTok to yeah. like 1,000 viewers on Twitch. And it's, right. and on Twitter, they're like 50,000. It's such a disconnect and yeah. they want to break in. Yeah. And we're thinking like, yo, TikTok's one of the biggest platform. You're like at the top. Why do you want to break into this? Yeah. But, like bro, like I went to a I went to a VidCon party yesterday, like my very first VidCon. So mm -hmm. I've never been before. I've only heard about VidCon through like other creators. Right. I remember like going to this party. I look around and I'm like, I I don't recognize anyone. <laughs> Everyone's TikTokers, I think. Everyone's like so young, so like well presented. Fucking the chisel. They're like like the perfect like TikTok Instagram face and I just felt so out of place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's like I, nothing makes me feel more like a boomer than like talking to a TikToker, you know? Yeah, they got a whole different phrase. I think Mr. Beast was at that party or something. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 Mr. Oh, Beast. Was? Uh, Mr. Beast was at the party the day before actually and apparently oh, okay. it was like completely mental. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, hear, I hear some stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so who do you usually uh, hang out with like in Japan because you got your trash taste buddies. Do you guys have like a network of content creators there, or is it uh, kind of? We are. It's 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 growing, mm -hmm. right? Because originally we moved to Japan. I, I moved to Japan because of my two buddies from Trash Taste. So originally I was living in the UK, mm -hmm. so was Connor. Uh, Joey was already living in Japan, and we were very close friends. So we kind of wanted to move there anyway. But right now the creator like all the influencer circles there it's not it's not that big actually and mm -hmm. it's it's i especially feel that coming here to LA where there are like you you say you're in LA and you like your DMs just like fucking blow up be yeah. like oh you're in town you're in town and in Japan it's basically you it's basically just like a handful of people i'd i'd, I'd say like mm -hmm. most of my friend group is uh, like the creators i work with but then also just you know personal friends that i've just met you know normal people <laughs> And uh, you know, people I've met through the company as well. So it's actually not that big. We're trying. We're hoping that once the country opens up, more people are going to want to move to Japan because I will say that Japan is like a content gold mine, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's it's so easy to make content in Japan because there's just so many weird things there. There's so many clickbaitable stuff, so many angles, so many interesting stories. But the problem is nobody knows how nobody knows how to move to Japan, especially mm -hmm. if you like don't speak Japanese. So, you know, I think there's going to be room for like more creators to move to Japan in the future. But right now it's like, yeah, it's still like pretty niche and pretty small. Yeah, I think a lot of people want to like everyone a lot of people in our friend circles like, I wanna go to Japan one day. I wanna it, live in Japan one it's day. It's the number one thing that people have been saying. Whenever like borders open up, I promise you Japan will be flooded by people. Fuck yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited then. Yeah. I mean like, we're going next month. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We're, we were going even before that floodgates opened because we wanted to go with the tour group to go like as early as possible. Right. But as soon as those like regulations get lifted, like I can't wait. Also, I hear, the dollar is smashing the yen right now. And so like, we're we're, oh. we're getting everything at 30% off in Japan. And I'm like, let's fucking go. I can't wait. Bro, I'm, I'm crying. Like being here, using the yen, I like I, I like a tear. A tear comes down every time I whip out my card, oh man. My it hurts, it hurts, man. But, wait, uh, but don't you guys make USD from your podcast? Yeah, but like, I, it's, we, we make USD. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I've got, I, I, don't, I don't know the exact logistics because you know that's what mm -hmm. my company does but uh, i think we do get paid in usd i hope i hope so otherwise i'm <laughs> actually going to cry <laughs> <laughs> thank god let's okay. go but like i want to hold on to all my to all of my yen now just right. just 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 so you know just in case it goes up again and then suddenly it's you know all better again but yeah now it's like it's an awesome time to go to japan now because yeah the yen is down and tourism isn't as open right now so you can go to like mm -hmm. a lot of places and you're gonna have like a much better time like especially if you're going to tokyo and kyoto areas you go to like hot tourist spots there's gonna be a lot a lot lot less people than you would usually find there is 
tourism huge in Japan? Like, let's say, like, we went on, like, I don't know, like, cherry blossom season. Is that just, like, packed, like, fucking nonstop everywhere? Yeah, yeah. Especially some places, like, Kyoto especially. When I went to Kyoto, I've only been to Kyoto once. It was, like, dead. There was, like, you could walk the streets, you could see all of the temples. And I had heard that in any other time of the year, it's, like, shoulder to shoulder, packed, full of tourists. And oh I wouldn't have enjoyed Kyoto at all if I had gone there during, like, peak tourism season. But, uh, yeah, in general, uh, when I had my first year in Japan, like, it's, it was busy, you know, it's, especially in the big tourist spots. Um, so, yeah, now's a great time to go before the country opens up. <laughs> you yeah. can have a lot more fun there. Yeah, but once it opens up, I just know, like, there's going to be 100 YouTubers uh -huh. flying over there, getting ready to, like, do the streamers, yep. <laughs> yeah, vending yeah. machine, like, clickbait titles. <laughs> like, I can see it, and, like, people streaming Japan, and you're just going to see, like, 20 streamers with their cameras at, like, all the popular yeah. spots. He says this. We're going to be one of yeah, them. Yeah, we're doing that. We're doing that. <laughs> we're doing that before, before all I'll, I'll, I'll take you guys around. There's, like, the fucking... The vending machine culture there is, like, insane. You can get so many weird things in vending machines. I remember, like, one of the weirdest things I saw was you could get used underwear. Used, oh. used underwear in a vending machine because... Japan, right? You know, oh there's, there's, uh, and where did you see this machine? Huh? Yeah, where exactly? <laughs> where exactly? Uh, I think it was near Akihabara, <laughs> because, because of course it was, because <laughs> of course it was. Um, but yeah, the, like I said, Japan's like an absolute content goldmine for mm -hmm. like streamers, YouTubers, because there's like one thing about Japan and just Japanese culture is that it's a country that really caters to any niche. So if you have like a niche in Japan or niche hobby no matter how strange it is, there's going to be something that caters towards that niche, whether it be a vending machine or whether it be a weird cafe or a girl's bar or something. There's there's so many weird themed stuff there. Mm -hmm. That's because it, it really caters towards anything that you can think of. So yeah, come, come over to Japan, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So you guys are in town for AX, Anime Expo, mm -hmm. right? Do you guys come every year? We, yes, we, yeah, like I've been coming every year since 2017. Mm -hmm. um, although I'd, I'd say that it's, it's weird because I've been on YouTube for 15 years now. Um, and most of my YouTube career has been like a very, very niche content creator. Because when I grew up and when I started doing YouTube, anime was like such a niche industry and a niche hobby. Yeah. And it's just been so, so my channel and my growth has basically grown with the anime fandom and the anime industry itself. And it's so weird now seeing one, how big anime expo has become and two, seeing other creators and seeing other massive like celebrities come out to say that they watch anime where I, where it's like so surreal for me because that was like, there was no way I could ever imagine anime getting this big when I started YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like, do you watch anime? I assume you do, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, were you paying attention during the whole Twitch streamers watch anime? Yeah, I was. Oh I my was. God. How, how, how did that feel from someone who's like? I was. I was, I was gonna bring it up. I was gonna bring it up actually. Um. So like, okay. So how it fell on my end, right? Mm -hmm. Was I get it? I want to watch anime on Twitch as well because I feel like I feel like. It's, it's, it's just free promotion for like a lot of shows. And a lot of us anime fans, we grew up, you know, watching shows on, you know, fan subs or, you know, downloading and torrenting them, right? YouTube, like reversed YouTube, Fuck, 240p, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Mexican subtitles, yeah, yeah. subtitles. <laughs> Naruto oh episode 100, part one out of three, you know, yeah, yeah. the good old days, God. the good old days. And I really feel that helped you know, that helped promote anime to a lot of people who would never get the chance to watch anime. And I feel like if live streamers could just watch anime like they do YouTube videos, it would be, it would give anime such a big boost, especially like imagine like old forgotten shows that nobody really watches anymore, right? And nobody really cares about. That's, that's like such a great avenue to bring it to a new audience. The problem is that Japanese companies just, they just work differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, us on, on our end, because uh, our agency is like a subsidiary, subsidiary of like one of the biggest anime companies in Japan right now. Oh, and wow. ev even now, f we have to like fight tooth and nail to get anything approved in terms of using their IP mm -hmm. in, in, ter in oh. the online space. So it did hurt a bit because I, w like, I saw it and I'm just like, I get it, but damn, 
it's it's I'm like I'm like here fighting for my life here just just <laughs> just just to get like these companies to try and listen to us and uh, and seeing like the new the meta of just like streaming TV shows I was I was scared that it was just going to set us back maybe but mm-hmm. you know I I do I do agree that we should definitely like try to watch try to you know I I, I really feel like companies should be more involved and should allow streamers to you know stream and broadcast more anime towards their audience because i think that's just like a genius strategy mm-hmm. yeah i think it's so easily easy especially because there's so many remakes nowadays like everything from fruits mm. baskets to they just announced trigun a new yeah. trigun next year right yeah 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 like let's say have streamers be able to restream like the old trigun before yeah. like the release date of the new one that feels like a a gimme right that feels like a win-win <laughs> yeah that know. feels like a like no one's watching the old trigun i'm gonna be honest <laughs> that shit was so old but i loved it so I, like i would watch it with my fans right exactly exactly it's it's so old it's got the nostalgia factor and it's just the audience has just like forgotten about it and i feel like with the new with the remake there's going to be a new massive influx of people who are interested in this ip and i feel like just having that opportunity for streamers to share what they love with their audience is just i don't know it's it's just like it's it's just so obvious to me <laughs> yeah it's definitely yeah. a a tricky line to walk because i i definitely agree with you it's like this is net positive for the mm-hmm. scene yeah. but it just takes one like old exec at a japanese company to say like they're stealing our content fuck everything pull yeah. everything and yeah. like you know what no more anime on YouTube, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, exactly, right? exactly. And uh, I remember we had like in. I'm not sure if you guys had heard about it, but in the anime community, there was this one guy who made Dragon Ball and like One Piece videos, mm-hmm. and then a hundred of his videos basically got striked and removed. Oh my yeah, and, god! And like they pleaded to like the Japanese company to like please understand that this is like fair use. It, well, he wasn't even like streaming it or whatever he was literally just reviewing the show and they just like striked everything yeah and it got to the point where like even like fucking pewdiepie and stuff like started talking about it because it's 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 terrifying on someone on my end because i feel like japanese companies and japanese mentalities when it comes to their like ips is like 10 15 years behind Mm -hmm. what you see here in the states you know everyone's like really forward thinking here um compared to what you see in japan yeah, it took Nintendo was like the last company to be willing to let streamers stream their games. Yeah, <laughs> oh god, Nintendo and like the Smash scene have like this this hate love hate relationship with each right. other. I hear horror stories about working with Nintendo because they're just yeah. again Japanese company. It's hard to get rid of old culture. I feel yeah, exactly. I and I hear about Nintendo being like really awful to work with, but I see I see it as hey. At least Nintendo is actually acknowledging you guys. Mm. We're not even being acknowledged here in the anime industry for with a lot of companies. I mean, mm. it's literally taken, you know, working directly under one company in, in order to have like a, in order for them to listen to us at all. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, it's 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 slowly getting there. We're we're trying our best. We're trying our best. But I do think there's like a lot of potential in the anime industry, yeah. with like you know, with just more forward-thinking ways of promotion and stuff like that. Yeah, it's definitely better to. If you're gonna do anime stuff, like to not do it, from my experience with the Japanese company, it's because like even if you can do it officially, there's yeah. a lot of rules and restrictions. And yeah. um, I know I, so after the whole uh, anime thing, I know I got approached to do uh, I'm not gonna name names, but a game for like one of the most popular anime of all time. I'm not gonna be specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, <laughs> that narrows it down to like five shows, okay, okay. <laughs> it's the longest running shonen. I think everyone can figure out what it is okay. at this point. Um, and they're like, oh, wait, we can't sponsor you because you watch anime on stream. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, okay. I'm like, you know, they got me there. I can't say shit. <laughs> but it was uh, like, I thought to myself, was the trade-off worth it to be able to watch anime on stream? But... As a result, like, that's the punishment, right? Yeah, Like, yeah, these yeah, Japanese exactly. companies, like, well, you watch it. Uh, it wasn't, holy shit. Like, I didn't watch their anime. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watched another anime, but they're like, hey, you broke this rule yeah. regarding something else, so we can't work with you. Yeah, because, like, I, I, like, I'd heard about it, because, like, the anime industry is, like, so fucking small that mm-hmm. you, you piss off one company, and, like, Japanese companies talk to each other, man. Mm-hmm. You, you piss off one company, you piss off, like, everyone. So especially me when it comes to my anime content i have to be like super super careful yeah like how i present my content can i ask why did you why did you do it just because you wanted to watch anime on stream so were you trying to like were you trying to like prove something 
the reason why I did it was because uh, the meta for Twitch streamers was to watch um, Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. Right. With Gordon Ramsay, because this guy, Trainwreck, did it two years ago. Yeah. And ever since then, everyone just, if they're going to watch one show, it was Hell's Kitchen or anything right. with Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. And the whole time, I'm like, you fucking idiots. Just because one person did it for one show doesn't mean it's okay. It's just some guy tried to step on a landmine, didn't blow up, and you guys are all stepping on a landmine. Right. So I'm like, if you're going to fucking stream shows, why don't you just stream what you want? Because one thing I hate about streamer culture, it's very monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You're already committing like copyright infringement. Yeah. You don't have to do Gordon Ramsay. Go do Survivor. Go do like, you know, Kim Possible or something. So I'm like, yeah. let me show you guys how to like jump on another land, my kind of deal. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so I did it with my favorite anime, uh, Naruto. Right. And it's like fucking 30 years old. Yeah. And I'm like, watching it and it was like, hey, you can't do this. This is illegal. I'm like, if this was a problem, why didn't anyone say shit when XQC is streaming Gordon Ramsay to 100k viewers, right? Right, right. It's because streamers don't think like that. They think one person did it, that means it's legal. It's, it's for free for all, baby. Right. And it kind of had the opposite effect where other streamers saw me do it and they're like, I guess streaming anime is super legal now. And the whole time <laughs> I'm like, that's you fucking it. No, I'm t like, I can get banned at any time and that would be 100% valid. Um, so Pokey and Mizkiv both started watching Avatar, The Last right. Airbender. Oh, and I'm like, that's, that's American. Yeah. That's like um, Nickelodeon who yeah, has yeah. a reputation for striking. Yeah. And Pokey unfortunately got hit. Uh, XQC was doing Hunter Hunter. Yeah. And he started getting that. scared yeah. as well. And like the whole time I'm thinking like, yes, you should be scared because just because someone does it doesn't mean it's okay. Yeah. But in the middle of it, I realized, yeah, this is kind of fun. Um, I think there's a lot of appeal watching old stuff with an audience because yeah. you can like clown on like the characters, the running jokes and yeah. stuff. So I actually have found like new respect and love for the show because of what I was doing. At the beginning, I was like, I just, I'm just doing this to be stupid. Yeah. But in the middle of it, like, I wish there was a way to do this right. um, legally. So I got striked and it's like 100% valid and it should happen. But it, it makes me think it's like, is this something we should take advantage of before the Japanese companies catch on? Because like in the early day of YouTube, you could get away with a lot more things. And yeah. it was like both good and bad. Bad because you're committing infringement. Yeah. But good is because this is the kind of content people want. Like, like you said, I wish there was a legal way to do it, but Japanese companies are slow. Uh, American companies are getting around to it I yeah, think yeah, because yeah. of it. Um, Crunchyroll did Spy Family mm -hmm. with Twitch. Yeah. And, uh, Paramount did Halo with some streamers. Oh, that, that, I don't know about that show. I mean, that sh <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that show might have been a little... <laughs> yeah, but now imagine shows that are good. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. With um, content creators. So like, I, I hope one day that streamers can stream like like yeah. really old stuff. Yeah, because like there's there's like a symbiotic relationship between you know game companies and game developers with mm -hmm. streamers. And I, I, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like there is a big opportunity there with not just gaming it could be like any form of media that people like to consume together because like you said watching naruto it's just like well, watching anime in, in general i would love to watch it with like my audience or like a large group of people because it just makes it more fun yeah you know, it just it just makes it more fun especially if it's something you love what anime would you choose to watch with the, your all your fans one piece easy. really oh. easy, you can easy. Watch, you can i watch. would i would love to man I like, just, like like one pace or like all the fillers I, I would happily sit through all the fillers so I can clown on it with my, oh like, my with Twitch Oh my god. Are you kidding me? That okay. <laughs> One piece. And, and that's like infinite content as well. That's like, true. I, true. I, I would start today and I'd be like 20 years later. All right, guys, we're kind of getting to the end now. You know? <laughs> Is it still the only manga you read? One Piece, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. up to date, I think. Holy shit. It's, 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 it's getting good. good. It's like good. It just hit the climax, so now we're in like breather phase yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it's gonna build up again I, I read a disgusting amount of manga so i stopped at wano and i take one piece one arc at a time yeah so yeah. i'm waiting for oh one. it's i heard it's good it's like finished. yeah Pe oh it finished yeah, yeah. one is finished oh you can you, you're I, gonna have a great time i heard it's very good very it's good. probably like the best post time skip one piece arc so far really yeah 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 okay like above and beyond i, yeah. I, I would choose ping pong the animation to watch with my fans really yes it was my 
anime of the year when they came out is yeah. fucking ridiculous. I love it. No, it's it's an amazing show. Yeah. Ping pong is like one of my it, it is probably like my favorite sports anime of all time. Oh, it's it's so good. But it's not even like a sports anime. It's kind of like a life anime. Yes. At that point, right? Oh. Uh, God. So so it's like it's a, it's the show about ping pong, obviously, but mm -hmm. it's a it's more about a show that's so realistic in like people trying to achieve their dreams. It's like painfully realistic where it, it goes into like, you know, just because you work hard at something doesn't mean you're gonna succeed at something more than something who's just naturally skilled at it. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, it get, it's it gets it gets it gets really real at times. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I fucking love it. Why would you pick that show? Just because it's one of your favorites? It's just because it's one of my favorites. I yeah. feel like it's like that where I have to choose something really old that I like to rewatch again. Something like yeah. Yu Yu Hakusho would be great or I, I don't know. Something something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you? Anything else that's outside of Naruto? Or Well, <laughs> I plan to do Shippuden. Oh, okay. This, I want to do it before the end of this year. Oh and my I, god. So the rule on Twitch is if you get strike three times, they will just permanently ban you from the platform. Man, so, playing with fire, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's got one. Okay. <laughs> so I got one. If I do it again, I might get my second one. And then after that, I can never do anything even remotely close because by the second I get strike for the third time, it's kind of like YouTube where you're Is just- a three strike system? Yeah, but they don't just delete your channel. They will stop you from creating new channels. You can't appear on any one stream. Right, right. So it's very much playing with fire. <laughs> I don't know if I'll do it. I'm, I'm sure like from the outside, when the whole Twitch anime meta was yeah. going on, like YouTube anime, people are like, these guys are fucking idiots. Yeah. What the <laughs> fuck are you, they, they're gonna like screw, like ruin it for the rest of us. And I think that was one of my concerns. Like, yeah, it's, I like doing things that are interesting, right, I guess. Right. And yeah, one of the risks I found was like, hey, I hope I get punished at the yeah. end. Like, I don't want, like an industry changing event and luckily like i just got striked and that was kind of the end of it yeah but i i do think there is something there in terms of businesses and mm. like broadcast companies working with streamers well do you think there's a risk that uh because like we like on youtube we had this like massive apocalypse where you know we had like a new copyright system that was implemented and that like completely changed the game in terms of like what you could and couldn't upload on youtube mm -hmm. do you think twitch is like that's just an inevit inevitability for twitch or i think so so right now the reason why <laughs> i'm like this is like industry stuff but the reason why twitch doesn't take action yeah against these infringement like I've seen Morbius streamed on Twitch for 24 hours yep. straight. Yeah. And the reason why they can't take action, because legally, if they do it without a report, they are admitting that they are aware of infringement happening on the platform. Right. And if you do it for one, you have to do it for all. And Twitch obviously does not have the money to constantly monitor everything or assume that liability. So they only take actions if the copyright holder issues a strike. Okay. Um, so that's how it works. Uh, which is why a lot of people get gets away with a lot of things, right? right? Because if you're a small streamer, you don't list it, you can probably watch like the entire Marvel series without anyone saying anything or claiming you. Right. Uh, that's, that, yeah, that's really weird to hear because like, for me, it felt like maybe Twitch was like a way more, like the platform had matured way less than what I thought it had mm -hmm. because it feels like, you know, if you blow up on Twitch and like some of the big mainstream creators on Twitch, it feels like there's some of like, you know, they're some of the most household names just in the creative field in general, you know? So yeah. it's comparing that to like, say YouTube, where everything is like very, very strict. So you, the, you, you, even though like the line is drawn pretty clearly, even if it's just below the line, sometimes you can get like demonetized or strikes or something as well. I, I didn't know that Twitch hadn't, was still in like, it, it feels like it's still in its infancy when, it, when it's evolving in terms yeah. of like setting the rules and everything like that. Yeah, it's kind of like YouTube pre-copyright system almost. Right, right. Like right now they don't have a way to live check your stream. So like right. everyone just like listens to copyright music and then like splits their audio. Yeah. But like at some point, like in the future, like it could go to like, them being really, really like enforce a copyright and be able being able to monitor live streams and when that happens like honestly streaming is gonna suck ass <laughs> I think it's gonna be <laughs> awful like listening to a streamer and they're not able to like a lot of the greatest like stream moments happen with like great music yeah mm -hmm. yeah right. like his best clip actually was playing PUBG with Highway to Hell and he had like a oh, yeah. sick clip with it like right. the time was perfect but like imagining that without any copyright music like 
it'd be terrible. Yeah, it would definitely take <laughs> the soul out of a lot of streams. I mm. feel like, but yeah, I don't know. It's 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 scary times, you know, because it, it, it. Do you ever feel scared that like the platform could just completely change everything when you wake up the next morning? Because I fear that for YouTube, you know. <sighs> <sighs> no, like I think I'm relatively like adaptable like it would definitely suck if we yeah. woke up the next day it's like the second we detect anything copyrighty we we're gonna strike you then like right it would be really sad but then we just play games yeah it's like there's not much you can do right <laughs> uh, <laughs> just go back to basics yeah I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it'd be it'd be a pretty sad time like i definitely i listened to no copyrighted music for like five eight years right because i was like really scared of that and then it's just like ended up being best for like uh my VODs as well. But right. then now I just stop giving a shit because I'm just like, I want to listen to whatever music I feel like. So yeah, yeah. It's like, if you see Taylor, if you're Taylor Swift, you didn't. No, you didn't. That never happened. So like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm never too worried about it. I feel like uh, every streaming platform has like a hundred problems and mm -hmm. like any, any year they end up solving one. Right. And it's like, well, maybe in the 99 years we'll be able to reach the perfect streaming pinnacle. Right. But like, I'm not even gonna be alive during that. I'll be honest. So like, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, I, I just, I feel like every system has flaws. The YouTube mm. streaming system has flaws. The Twitch streaming stream has flaws. The other streaming spaces have flaws. Yeah. And so it's like you kind of live with what you can get. Here. Yeah. And like, I, I live a pretty blessed life, so it's hard to really nitpick at like, well, they're, yeah, they can fuck me over, but like, yeah, I, I can, I can work around it. I've never gotten banned. I've streamed for eleven years, so. That's 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 a good record. Man. Yeah, eleven never, years. Never gotten banned for anything. Damn. And I'm like, I kind of want to now. Like, maybe I should start streaming. <laughs> Just this watch is, it. This is the goddamn saint of uh, Twitch, man. I'll, I'll start streaming Shippuden for toast. <laughs> I, did, like, I can eat one more band, two more bands, and he can. That's perfect. Yeah, I, I thought. Go oh, sorry, go for it. I thought about having someone else stream it, and then yeah. I would restream their stream. But honestly, I think they'll just ban it. <laughs> Oh god! Man, I thought stream was just like they, they they were just like all right. I want to go on holiday. All right, let's do something bannable. Okay, oh. <laughs> yeah. that's what I thought you guys did. Yeah, uh, like when you get banned and you return, like there's some hype around it. The yeah. problem is the three ban system. Right. It's it's terrifying. Right. Because right? you're like oh, once you're at number two, you just become paralyzed to do anything. Right. 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 So I'm at one. I probably won't risk it for a second one just right. yet. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know on YouTube it's so much harsher because Ludwig, <laughs> he tried to get in on the anime meta. He str streamed the intro to a Naruto opening, upside down, reversed, slowed down 50% audio. No. Instantly striped. No. Really? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, I, 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 I know this dealing with anime content on YouTube for mm -hmm. so many years that I'm just like, that's just that's basic that was that was always going to get caught yeah. if you play something longer than a 15 to 20 second clip it's youtube's algorithm is like really really oh. good now that it will detect it unless it's like you put it in like a like a post box with like a moving background or something and at mm -hmm. that point you can't even recognize the mm -hmm. fucking show you know <laughs> <laughs> you're watching it through like minecraft view so yeah, yeah that was always going to get caught like you, you mentioned like you mentioned the streamer platform still like evolving and everything like yeah. that i don't know interesting conversation with another creator the other day about how long do you think your careers are going to last uh. right and like as a youtuber i as a youtuber like i quit like i had a had a like real job for like a few years and then i quit that to do youtube and youtube always felt like a job for me until i started trash taste mm -hmm. and the reason for that was because trash taste was like just a formula that i could just always like fall back on you know you talk about being creatively uh fulfilled um and you know it's great working on like big exciting projects but as a youtuber it burns you out so quickly and sometimes you just need to get a get a fucking video out just like that and mm -hmm. having like a podcast where you just talk to your mates that gave me that safety net and that managed like to like allow me to transition mentally from thinking okay youtube is a job versus this is now my career but like what's it like for Twitch streamers because I, do, do you think of this as a job or do you think of this as like okay this is like my career now that I'm building something long term can you even think like that I find you, it so you, interesting you take this? I mean you've been doing it for 10 okay. yeah, yeah, 10 yeah, I, years okay, this, I 11 think, years here so uh, you've, you've got longevity I'll, I'll put it this way like I have streamed through like like I started at League of Legends Pro I went to Worlds yeah. I went to I did I didn't transition to coach I became an interviewer I did all this stuff and in between then I like 
was at like 10,000 viewers. I went down to like 800. Mm -hmm. I went back to like 10,000. I'm like currently at like two, three, whatever. And so like I've weathered through like all the storms, all the trots and highs and peaks. Yeah. Um, I used to think I could stream forever. Like uh, people just like I have to be on average, I've streamed about 190 hours every month mm -hmm. for the last three, four years. Yeah. Re I, I did a... I did a 365 day stream challenge where I streamed every single day of the year in 2019, right. which was easy. It was COVID, I guess, kind yeah. of. <laughs> and then um, the next year, I, sh I didn't do that, but I streamed more hours. Right. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I, I just, I, I love to stream. But um, recently, it's felt like maybe a little bit more jobish than I wanted to. Uh, and I think that may be due to like a variety of factors. But like, I see it as a, like, it sounds like when you are on YouTube, you have to be, you have to be creative or yeah. else people don't watch. Like yeah, each yeah. video has to be unique, compelling, and like you put a little bit of your soul into it, right? Yeah. Whereas YouTube, some, or streaming, streaming, sometimes you can just, you start the go live button and you your intro is like, I'm just doing whatever the fuck I want today. And you're just chilling, it just laid back and that's it. Um, the thing is like, I use streaming to dodge responsibilities sometimes. <laughs> so like, it's like, I don't want to do like, other shit, fuck it, I'm gonna start, hit the live stream button. Okay, 12 hours have passed, I can go to sleep. And I wake up tomorrow, I'm like, oh, I really need to do something. I'm gonna hit the start stream button again. I'm gonna late, like, I'm gonna push back my responsibilities for like a week. Um, I think that like, while you use, you're happy to have trash taste as a thing to just fall back on. Yeah. I'm happy to have OTV as like a creative outlet. Right, like, right. For me to like sit down with my, my friends as well to just like either shoot the shit or create a cool content, like that keeps me going. Hmm. So like I, we found like similar, Outcomes fulfilling the things that we needed. Yeah, <laughs> hilariously enough. Just just start something with a group of friends, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's basically yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so like, yeah, I find it like reverse of you. Where I find sometimes streaming is very routine. It's really easy to get comfortable. I hate being comfortable. I want same, same I want man. to be a little stressed all the time. Yeah. Um. And so like, if I'm ever too comfortable, I'm always just like, I'm in a bad spot. Right. Kind of. So yeah, I think streaming can do that to, with you too much. Right. God, the, the, the idea of just turning the, pressing the go live button and not having a plan, that like terrifies me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd like, cause I think like a YouTuber, so I think, okay, what's the angle of this content that I'm making? How do I clickbait this? You know, right. I, like it's so hard for me just to like switch off that part of my brain. Like even when I stream, I stream with like the idea that this is going to be a YouTube video that ah, I can okay. also like repurpose as well. So right. I, I always think about it as like YouTube first and then streaming if I want to stream as well. Mm -hmm. And so are you the same way or do you just? Uh, so I used to be like when I came back to Twitch at the end of last year, I kind of tried to do like one idea every stream right. for YouTube and it was doing pretty well, but it's really hard to keep up, especially something that's both good for YouTube and Twitch. Yeah. Um, which is hard because there are some things where, you know, it's designed for one or the other. And if you try and go down the middle, it's kind of like subpar in both aspects. Right. Um, so I kind of just stopped that and just stuck to uploading Among Us videos because <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> like the way I see YouTube, it's like, I mean, is it about the views? Like, because I can do like something cooler for like 400K views or yeah. I can do Among Us for a million views. <laughs> oh, right? Uh, bro, that's like soul crushing, right? You spend you spend like fucking hours, like days of your time yeah. putting yourself into this one project. No, nah, Among Us. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I mean, people just really like Among Us. Um, yeah. But I think I, I, I can't pinpoint exactly what about it is yeah. so interesting. It's like, cause when I play Among Us, it's after a whole year of nonstop Among Us, I'm like, I know what's gonna happen. Someone's gonna <laughs> die, someone's gonna call a meeting and I can just do everyone's voices because everyone's kind of like on a script almost. Right. Um, but people just keep watching. I think people just like the, the back and forth and people like doing, like watching you be good at something. It's yeah. like people watching like a professional chef. You don't know the first thing about yeah. cooking, but it's mesmerizing to see like someone who's good at their craft. Yeah. And I'm great at Among Us. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. If only there was a pro Among Us scene, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Esports. <laughs> Where's the Among Us Esports, right? <laughs> if only. Um, because like one thing I did notice recently is, you know, going back to talking about how this can be a career is that you can, I've seen like plenty of creators now really like, you know, drop off a bit, but mm -hmm. like they're able to like come back now. So I feel like, you know, like even looking at Ray William Johnson, you know, mm -hmm. top of YouTube for a while, did equals three and then just kind of stopped doing YouTube. And now he's just like come back via YouTube shorts and TikTok. 
and yeah, that's just that's just, that's insane to me that he's relevant again, right? But yeah. it's given me like the confidence to feel that even like I, I feel like online careers can like come in waves. You know, it's it's oh, rare yeah. it's it's rare that you're constantly growing, but even if you like have a few years where you like have a lower viewership, you can just as easily do something exciting and like bounce back and everything like that. Yeah, uh, which has kind of helped me in terms of looking at this as something long-term as opposed to waking up every year and thinking I'm going to be re- like irrelevant tomorrow or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I like YouTube because I feel like if you're good and you understand what people want, you can mm-hmm. always be somewhat relevant. Yeah. Uh, whereas in streaming, you do get streamers who are like really good at one specific game. And the moment that game drops off, they lose 90% of the audience because right. they did not translate any of their highs into like themselves or like their personality um which happens a lot in gaming oh, yeah because yeah, i used to be like a hearthstone streamer and so right. i paid attention to like the other guys most of them lost 70 percent of the average viewership because hearthstone kind of died off and only a couple men should kind of like transition to s- some other things and streamers they don't have that much foresight because luck has a lot more to do with streaming than YouTube. I feel like YouTube, there's a bit of luck, but at the end of the day, if you're making banger content with good editing, good audio, you're right. gonna get views no matter what. Yeah. Whereas in streaming, it's like, there's a lot of luck involved in streaming. I think the only part of streaming that's not lucky is if you're the best at the game. If you're the rank one, you could be on like, like fucking the shittiest audio, like no mic, uh, like blaring music, like yeah. your cam doesn't work, right? Or like your video quality doesn't work, but people will watch because, especially if it's a popular game, people want to know, like, right? There's just some appeal to watching the best. And yeah, I think that's like <laughs> that's the only way on Twitch you can be go from zero to hero. Yeah, if you're the absolute best at a popular game. So do you, would you say that it's like almost impossible to like? How how can I ask this? It's 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 like. Can someone aspire to be a streamer and think that they have a decent chance if they think like they have a good personality and a good oh. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I mean That's it's harsh, true. but like a lot of people say like, yo, I got a chill vibe stream, check me out. I'm like, yeah, yeah. you and ten million other people. That's true. Um the hardest thing teaching these uh new streamer is that you shouldn't just turn on your stream and expect anything. You'll yeah. never get any audience because Twitch the algorithm, the ranking system is just by views. So it's like, yeah. you're always at the bottom along with 10,000 other streamers. Right, right. Uh, but people don't want to hear that, right? Yeah. People are like, no, I'm different. I'm like super, I got good vibes. I'm like, no, no. A lot of I got have, the vibes, man. I got yeah, the vibes. That's, that's what, what they I got. say. They're like, come in for some chill vibes. And it, it, it's harsh to tell them, it's like, everyone has chill vibes you can't just it's like a guy telling a girl they should date him yeah. because he's a nice guy it's like that's that's the bare minimum bro. Yeah. that should be the standard if yeah you, if, you, if you ain't got to, if you ain't got that something's gone very wrong yeah, yeah if that's your like marketing something's terribly off yeah. so my advice is always to like you gotta make a name for yourself on youtube or on tiktok i feel like tiktok it's algorithm crazy. is really good yeah actually. tiktok's got like i think the best algorithm in the world yeah, I yeah, actually I agree. Uh, yeah. like I don't know who made it, but they are a ge- they're geniuses. Mm-hmm. I'm just yeah. straight up. I'm just it, it's like scary to a point because I'm just like how how do you garner my personality so accurate just by swiping? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's it's an algorithm that just knows everything about you, and all I did was like swipe up, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's insane. Yeah, no, that's interesting because I I saw that uh, recently. Ninja he recently released a masterclass of called like how to be a streamer or something i haven't watched it but mm-hmm. I, i'd be i would be interested now after hearing you guys being like nah you, you can't you can't plan to be a successful well, streamer i would think the only way to do it on any stream platform aside is aside from what those said is just to be really 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 damn good at the game yeah yeah ninja also wrote a book about streaming but i, I haven't seen any streamer be like thanks ninja <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be here without you. I mean, I think Ninja's masterclass is more of a marketing play. Yeah. Because um, I like the idea of like helping streamers, like training them up from yeah. the bottom to the top. And it's never like, it's never like, hey, bro, just start streaming. Yeah. Kind of deal. It's more, you have to figure out, this is the same with YouTube. It's like, you have to figure out what people want. It's yeah. like, nobody wants to watch a platinum level player be medi- above average at a very popular game. People yeah. want to see the best of the best, right? Yeah, because like even for me as you as a YouTuber, whenever I get asked the question of, oh, how do I 
become a successful YouTuber? Mm -hmm. Well, it's you always need, in my opinion, if you're going to give advice, you always you always you always need like a baseline to work to work up towards. So if they're just like have never made a video before, mm -hmm. then why are you even asking me? Because yeah. you don't even know like the basics, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a general direction and an understanding of your audience and what kind of content you want to make, okay, then I can actually give you some advice that would be useful. That's not just like the generic advice of just, you know, oh, find your audience, just be yourself, Whenever make videos. Whenever someone, someone asks me something like, I haven't started streaming yet, but like, do you have any tips for me? I'm always like, start streaming first, come back to me after. Like <laughs> exactly, strictly, right? I'm like, I don't know how you're gonna stream. I don't know what you're gonna be good at you don't know where you're gonna be good at you tell me afterwards yeah essentially. yeah yeah because it's you learn so much just by doing the craft or doing whatever you know platform or content you want to make because mm -hmm. you can't ever plan for everything that's going to go wrong <laughs> or everything that you're not going to know yeah, yeah. and that I, that I feel is like the biggest every every successful creator has gone through a period where they've just sucked at making content right mm -hmm. but I feel like that's just like a like a trial like a Rite of passage, you know. Do you remember your first video? I do, I do. I really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I, I, I didn't really make that many videos. I made like anime reviews. So my first ever video was an anime review of Bleach that <laughs> I okay. wrote and edited in one night because I had a math exam the next day and I didn't want to study for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and, and your review of Bleach was. I gave it a 7 out of 10 back then. Oh, you know what? <laughs> That's probably pretty right. You think so? You think I, so? I, all I remember about Bleach anime was I'd rather read the manga than in every arc after Soul Society sucked. But their OPs had some bangers, and that yeah, 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 that's yeah. all I remember. Which is not uh... what what season was it on when you wrote the review? So it was just after Soul Society. Oh my god, because <laughs> that's really important. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, yo, Soul Society, fuck, is fucking awesome. Yeah. I'm not sure about this new stuff, but yo, Soul Society, and then. The rest of Bleach happened, and I regret what I said. Hey, so. they're coming back. You know, I know. Ichigo has a fucking like children. It's gonna be. Yeah. It's gonna be crazy. I'm actually like Loki, even though like I, because like I've clowned on Bleach so much because mm -hmm. I like after Soul Society and after the next arc was it Hikakumundo or whatever. I, I, I read. I read all of it. I you read all me. of it. Yes, yeah, same here actually. When when I tell you I read manga, I mean I tell <laughs> I've read everything that exists. <laughs> and I've reread it. <laughs> that exists. I, yeah, I've read the um, uh, what you call it the the boxing what fuck. Uh, Hajime no Ippo? three times. Front three back. times. Yeah. Oh, it's, well, lo it's longer than One Piece. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, it's, so, it's like I, I just get bored, so I read like one two hours every night, right. pretty much. So like right now I'm reading Osho Oshinoko. Oh, it's fucking banger. That's such actually, a good, okay. that's such. Uh, Kaguya, Sam, uh, Kaguya, uh, fucking manga. No. The author wrote a new thing, oh. and I'm gonna say right now, I hate Kaguya, but uh, the the new thing is really good. Yeah, uh, shockingly good, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. But um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, let, 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 let me say that on you because I think I think every like influencer should read Oshinoko mm -hmm. because it focuses on like the entertainment industry in Japan. Okay. And so it focuses on like a bunch of idols uh, and a bunch of like actors trying to like break into the field, right? But it has such a big like play on social media and how that affects how they become successful. So mm. there is an entire arc that focuses on cancel culture, right? And so so without spoiling like the specifics of what happens, one person within, uh, within their cast member gets canceled, right? And so they have to strategize how they can get this person uncancelled in the public yep. in the public view of things, wow. right? And it's just it's reading this as like a creator, it blew my fucking mind because the author's understanding of like just like our field and our space was just like so insane because mm. you know we we've all we've all read that fucking twit longer we've all yeah. seen the apology videos and like we know what makes like a bad apology video or like mm. why creators get cancelled or you know why creators fall off but it was so weird seeing seeing that and bit it being used as like a as like a plot point you know highly recommend it yeah all right but back to the big three okay I I don't think I don't like anime or manga if there's no big three just straight up i always prefer having the big three around which is like bleach uh one piece naruto i actually feels like i love that era and it, fe it feels like just normal to have bleach come back i think 
there should always be a bleach. Yeah. And you know, like, Would I you know, say that's not Demon Slayer, though? Or? Shut the fuck up. I'm going to be honest, reading Demon Slayer, that shit was awful up until uh, Hell Train arc, which is the movie. Yeah. Uh, or, and they did a great job. And then uh, it's like so incredible how they did the animation. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's like when, I, when people talk to me about Fire Force, and yeah. given whatever Fire Force is, it's just like, incredibly well done animation yeah. but the story base story itself sucks ass let's just let's say it yeah and so yeah. <sighs> but like yeah i really i'm excited for the big three i always hope that they exist yeah i mean uh, the big three i guess is was like a whole generation of anime fans yes. right i was mean like, was it 10 years that they ran bleach one piece naruto kind of yeah i wow. i yeah, it feels like it. Yeah, yeah, Bleach yeah. went for a while. It Bleach went for a long time. Like even yeah. when it kind of didn't wasn't too good, it still ran for a long time. Like the artist is still one of my favorite of all time. Yeah, anything that he does, I will read because bro, he it, he's like he knows how to draw drip, yeah. man. Yeah. Like the characters, the like, Bleach, like you have your favorite between One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach, but mm -hmm. like Bleach just had the swag. You know, mm -hmm. they the characters just had the drip, the swag. It was just cool. Yeah, the character uh, designs are all like pretty on point, like. Kenpachi and then yeah. the Sakura sword guy. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone was cool. No, he he knows how to make characters cool. Like I think he's his own costume designer. Yeah, yeah. So like he is. he is everything he touches has that level of detail yeah. when it comes to character outf outfits. So yeah. he's he's great. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, a story, you know, it's it's Kubei, Tito, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, the story is like <laughs> not in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> what they do is like, oh, there's a Super Saiyan 4 or there's a Super Saiyan 5 and you're yeah. like okay, okay this is how they upgrade it yeah. I feel like the Bleach guy was like I'm gonna do that but instead of just saying like Super Shinigami I'm gonna create this entire new race and they're the strongest one and after that race is like I'm gonna create this newer race and they're actually the big guys like yeah. non-stop for five arcs straight and you're like there's no fucking way he's gonna do it again and in the finals it's like here's four people you've never heard of they're yeah. actually the ruler of this whole society and they're like coming in and they look cool and shit but you're like I don't give a fuck about them why are they fighting the big bad guy why isn't the main character fighting the big bad oh guy oh my god don't worry the new arc is supposed to be there is always supposed to, there's always a hell in soul society and they're gonna pull like all the people who died and they're gonna go into hell apparently and yeah. I'm just like oh that's I actually like that I'm never I'm, I'm hyped I'm I, I, don't, I don't know this is like purely nostalgic talking oh yeah yeah I, I, I know like the bleach kind of fell off during the end oh, yeah it, it did but I've clowned in it a lot but mm -hmm. then like seeing the trailer and just like hearing the music again you know like the theme tune it just like it just brought back all of the hype for me I and mean, I, not everything needs to hit right like I would say even Sh Shippuden was pretty bad then mm -hmm times you know the only person that's kept like consistent quality is okay oh that's kind of a god yeah he is but like he's a, he, he i think actually the manga medium kind of sucks for him because he's such a bingeable thing but mm -hmm. like chapter by chapter i'm not a huge fan mm -hmm. so like i because he's yeah. he's great at i realized he was a god when he wrote what was it the impel down yeah arc yeah. and i was like oh he connected his whole world like yeah. he knew what he was doing the whole fucking time yeah and i was like oh this guy's a, this guy's a genius but like uh, you had to like read a lot and like read through a lot of exposition to see that and i think it's he's like the best of the old style and i think now attention spans are really low like a lot lower than they were before mm -hmm. yeah. you can't write something like one piece unless you're like him yeah which is impossible so now the, the best thing for like the new generation without that like you don't have to read a lot chainsaw man you don't yeah. read shit there's no words he just <laughs> sometimes the panels just have nothing there except for like the the characters and right. whatever they do and I think he is a master at what he does. Like I, the anime's coming out next season. Yeah, I think it's next season. I can't wait. That's the. I, I've the not read the manga of Chainsaw Man because I want to experience like it, it in anime form because oh, it looks like it's, Mappa, Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, it is my favorite one right now. And like right. the guy's a master. He he finished writing the first arc. Uh, just in his downtime, three months later, Shonen Jump was like, "Oh, we have a two hundred page one shot." The guy just wrote in his free time after he stopped. He, so he just released the full thing, and then like six months later, he released another two hundred page one shot. And I'm like, where, when, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> he's he's uh really he's really excellent. I think yeah. the, he's like the best of the new generation. Essentially. Yeah, he's yeah. I don't know how he's like doing Chainsaw Man and then releasing all of these one shots as well. Yeah, I'm, I can't wait for the one uh, for the Chainsaw Man anime. It's it's gonna be so hype. Yeah, I, th I think it's gonna be like the next 
massive, massive anime. Mm. I'm actually surprised. Are you watching Spike's Family, by the way? Ah, uh, no. Because like I'm, I'm surprised how big that blew up. I, every, yeah. every, I didn't expect it. To blow I didn't up. expect it to blow up that big as well. It's a great like slice of life style like com comedy. Yeah. Um, ex but reading it, like I dropped it at some point because it was mm. just like it's just like not super going anywhere very fast. But yeah, I think the anime did a. I didn't watch it, but I've heard the anime did a great job of keeping up the like slice of life stuff while still making it very easy to watch. Right. And so, uh, I just thought it's like. Because the character design, you have like oh, a cute awesome. little oh. pink hair girl. Oh, between like Anya and like fucking oh yeah. Yor. Yeah, yeah, Anya and Yor. Yeah. Like that's going to be like every next like cosplay at Anime mm. Expo. I'm, more, I'm calling it right now. Uh, what are you guys expecting from Anime Expo cosplay wise? Because, okay, Attack of Titan <laughs> came out. Attack, literally every cosplayer AX was like a fucking yeah. Attack of Titan. Overwatch came out. I saw a million divas there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what's this here? Okay, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna call it. Uh, it's not even gonna be anime. It's gonna be Genshin. It's gonna be Genshin oh. cosplayers. Like, I I feel like that community is just like you see like the like every like third post on my Twitter timeline is like a Genshin fan art, right? And yeah. I know I know there's it's gonna be filled with Genshin cosplayers. I think I told you, but did you know Genshin is the number one game on Twitter? It's the number one tagged number one thing on Twitter. Seriously, globally. Mm. Wow, it is a fan art and uh, cosplay. Yes, it's like like they know how to build waifus. They build a like waifu <laughs> there, and that game is making billion fucking Bro. dollars every year. It's number one on Twitter, and Twitter is banned in the country that that game was made. What the <laughs> hell, man? That's how you know you're doing oh, something that's right, man. Actually, that's how you know you're doing something uh, right. Genshin is actually like, oh, that's true. Genshin. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be. I, I guess Demon Slayer is not hype anymore. <sighs> I mean, it is still hype, but maybe not close enough to. to I thought that was gonna be Demon Slayer. Cause I thought this. I okay. I watch one anime a season, like yeah. a couple episodes a season, not even a full show. Right. But then Demon Slayer season two came out, and I was like, "Well, this is kind of like whatever." I'm in the living room, still living with Toast and Yvonne. Yeah. Yvonne starts watching it. We go through episode two. I come out. I'm like, "Oh, that's cool, Demon Slayer. I should so we'll just go watch that." Yeah, so yeah. We're eight episodes in straight. I'm just like, "Holy." Fuck, this anime is so good. It's like what I wish Dragon Ball was. It's it's Dragon Ball <laughs> yeah. cutting out like the power up part. Yeah, yeah, They're just yeah. it's just straight full adrenaline action. Two minutes of recap. Holy episode. shit! Like the the animation for Demon Slayer season two was like insane. Yeah. It's probably like some of the best animation I've seen for a TV series. Because normally, like you remember, like back in the Naruto days, where you'd have like twenty or twenty five episodes of like shitty animation, then all of a sudden you had like that one big fight. <laughs> that's, like, that's suddenly like everyone had the glow up. Everyone just like the fights look fucking insane. And then you'd go back, you know? <laughs> but like Demon Slayer, it just seemed like every episode was that one episode from Naruto, just like for an entire season. It's insane. Yeah. Cause uh, I know they kind of blend both 2D and 3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like so cool to watch. And from what I know, 3D animation is cheaper than 2D it, animation. It's weird. I don't know how that's supposed to be the case, but 2D is getting crazy expensive. Yeah. yeah, I think I think because with 3D, once you build your assets, mm -hmm. it, it it depends on like the situation. But talking in general, I believe like once you build your assets, then you could just reuse those assets in the animation. Whereas for 2D, you you, you have to draw, draw you have to draw frame. every frame, right? So in some cases where you know you only need a character for like a single shot, it would be more beneficial to be for it to be 2D. But if you have characters coming back reoccurring, then we then it would be like 3D. I think people appreciate animation a lot more nowadays. Me, me included. Like I was like whatever on animation, and recently I was like, holy fuck, animation's sick. Yeah. Because um, even when like Riot's new show Arcane, I saw you did a video on this. Ooh. Arcane was like, how do I throw a budget at a fucking show and it just be like an earth shatteringly high amount of budget? Yeah. It's like when people ask me what the best anime for that year was, I'm like, it's probably that. <laughs> it is. It, it, it was. It yeah. was. Arcane was like a brilliant, and like everyone's waiting for season two. But like yeah. that was something where I think Riot proved like. There's an audience for people who want to watch something that's like insanely well animated. I don't, they like did their own style of animation for that. Yeah. They bought out the studio who did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like, okay. It's fun. Arcane was so insane. Like for one, it made League of Legends cool for like a month. And I'm just like, <laughs> any, anything that can do that is already like a fucking insane. But also like from an animation perspective, some of the scenes in that just, completely blew my mind like you know echo versus jinx oh yeah oh, i've rewatched that one scene so many times because there is so much going on with such little dialogue it's just like a masterclass in storytelling and animation mm -hmm. the great thing about riot is they're like 
we were talking about how like uh, Japan culture is like very strict with their rules. Riot will let you use anything from their IP at all. You want to take the whole, don't use the whole fucking film, but <laughs> an anime episode. But if you want to use like a minute clip, they will never strike you. They have never strike anyone for any of their music, any right. of their artwork. They are like fully like do whatever the fuck you want yeah. for all the creators. And yeah. I think that's helped Riot a lot, like grow like tremendously because they're just like as long as you like. Don't cross the line, which is fucking obvious. Don't stream the whole fucking episode. It's like you can just use like however long clips you want. We're never going to strike you. For yeah, it. I, th I think like the worst thing about Arcane was the fact that it made me want to play League of Legends again. <laughs> and I'm like, no. And like I had friends who watched Arcane, and they asked me like, oh, should I get into League? Oh, should I get into League? I was like, don't, don't let Arcane trick you, man. It's, it's, it is, it is not worth it. <laughs> yeah, really well done. And like I don't think anyone was expecting it. Because this is just a video game company, and then they come up with probably the best show of the year. I yeah, would say. yeah, it was. It was the best animation, the best show I yeah. think of yeah. that year. Easily, easily, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it's funny because my friends are Dota players, and they're like, "You should watch Dragon's Blood." Oh God! I watched the first episode, and I'm like, "How about you guys go watch Arcane?" They watch Arcane, they come back to me they're like, "This isn't fair." I'm like. Tough shit, baby. This like one had like the animation budget of like a million. The other one had like forty million. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, oh. Yeah, I've had the exact same conversation with Dota players where mm -hmm. they where they where they cry knowing that uh, Arcane got made. It's like, even if you hate League, like you have to watch the show and be like, "Fuck." Yeah, it's actually fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, Lee, uh, like Arcane, I, I, I'm, I can't wait for season two. It's, it's got like so much potential. It made me realize how interesting the world of League was. And like, you, you know, like, remember, like, I remember like old school League where nobody, nobody gave a shit about the lore pages. I was like, you, you have these people that read the lore pages of League of Legends and you know, they get fucking clowned on. But now mm. it's made me genuinely interested in the world and the, the entire world that it inhabits. Riot does this really weird thing where like their world building for I think their MMO as well as their like Runeterra world mm -hmm. is done through their card game, Legends of Runeterra. Right. So like they write like long lore segments and like they intro like like a lot of like fully animated three minute things right. just for the card game. Like you should watch their like their set things and you'll be like you learn about like Mart Mount Targon, you learn about like the like Lunari, Solari, you'll learn so much about the game lore wise. And right. I think they tested a lot of things because they retconned like everything in the game. In the yeah. game. They went through like a bunch of writers over the years. I think they've done that to prepare like, and they, they tested some stuff in Legend of the Tale. Like, if it didn't work out, then they fucking scrapped it. So yeah, yeah. They're like testing with their lore, I think, just so that it fully flushes out. And like, it's not super obvious unless you're like really into Legend of the what it is. But like, if you ever go back to watch, every single three minute short there's like i think 10 at this point there's yeah a lot. you will they're beautiful they're and they're done yeah. in different styles and you'll learn a lot about the world you'll be like damn that's kind of cool like it's no. kind of sick that like frail wards like this kind of sick that like you know mount targon's like this i think they're they're definitely amping their, themselves up for like a great game yeah or like a great like universe yeah I, I actually like watched all the shorts after arcade oh. because I, I had i had like i had like the binge where i was like yes. I, I need more <laughs> i need more i need more league of legends in my life and i saw like i binged all the shorts and i'm like mm. i can't wait for some of these places to like show up in the show maybe mm -hmm. you know i'm it's it's very very exciting time yeah season two is gonna be hype yes all right We'll move on to viewer questions. Oh, this, oh, this is the time we gotta use this. From Fishberry, do you have a bucket list of things you wanna do before you die? What's on it? <laughs> ah, that the is, classic. That is a bucket list. That is a that is a question. Um uh, <laughs> Bucket list. Uh I guess creatively, I do have one thing, I guess. Um it's gonna sound like cheesy, you know. But I've always wanted to make my own anime in, in some way, shape, or form. Yes, mm -hmm. okay, I was that weeb, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we did that. Like, we, where we did an anime opening. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But that was like our profits for the whole year. <laughs> we, and we, did, we got nothing out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's expensive. For that, yeah. it cost like a hundred grand. Yeah. And that, we just made it for n personal gratification. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And afterwards I was like that was probably the worst business decision OTV's ever made, but it was great. It was cool. <laughs> yeah. Cuz I, I I want to do it, but I know for a fact that I would be sinking a lot of money into it for no basically no return. So it's 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 that it's you know fighting fighting with that, but also 
you know, it's kind of like a dream kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. You get to yeah. make your own anime, make your own animation, whatever. And now, would the anime be about you, or are you just making the anime? No, I would. I would not want to make an anime about me. I would. Mm -hmm. I have like a lot of like stories that I want to get told that mm -hmm. I think would be pretty exciting to tell in the medium of animation and anime. And you know, being an anime fan for so long in my life, that's just like that's just like the final goal. You know, if 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 it ever presents itself, hopefully, touch wood. Mm -hmm. Um. In terms of anything else, yeah, I don't know. I guess I just want to travel around more. I, there's a lot of places in the world that I still want to go to that I haven't been able to go to yet. Really, really want to go to, really want to, go to Iceland. Um, that's that looks like one of the most beautiful countries I've ever seen. And it's yeah, cold. yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think like ever since like the pandemic happened and like I, you just couldn't go traveling at all. It's just kind of like upped my want to like travel the place to travel the places that I've never been to before and I've always really wanted to go. I always really wanted to go to Australia and finally doing that this year for the first time. Um, so yeah, I don't know, that's pretty generic answers, but <laughs> can't really think of like anything else off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. How about you, Scar? Hmm. You know, I actually wanted to say something in animation. That's the reason why we did the opening. Because I was like, I want to do something cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think it'd be it was like a dream that if OTV could like do an anime and have the really like fucking voice. It would be sick. But I guess a uh, bucket list for me, huh? Uh, you know, I've always wanted to go to Japan. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I'm going. I'm literally. It's so sad that we're going. You guys should be gone during that time. Yeah. But like, we're going next month, and I am just like, please, dear God have this work out because I'm like a huge foodie and I hear Japan has the best food in the world oh, God, and I hear you. Japan so is good. also like like a, what a great place to visit you can fucking find anything you want to do like uh, and like I can't wait like it's gonna be great I I can't it's gonna be like a trip to remember yeah so this is your first time in Japan yes okay, okay. I, I traveled a shitload when I was younger like in my early early 20s like 21 20 uh, 22 I traveled all around the world I think that killed my wanderlust right. I think you have that right now but before I was like alright I've been to Ukraine China China every year I've been to like, South Korea I've been um, uh, Spain I'm like okay fuck this I just want to stay home and be like a homebody and, right. like okay I'm over that I want to go to Japan it'd be nice like right. at least one big trip a year would be cool yeah you're gonna have a great time <laughs> what about you uh on a philosophical level before I die. I always wondered if it's possible to be on your deathbed, deathbed and be content and be like, yeah, I'm ready, I can die. Or are you gonna be like terrified that, oh shit, I'm not ready to die, I didn't do X, Y, and Z, or like I didn't experience this. Um, so no bucket list, I just really don't want to be scared when I die. Damn, man. Yeah, because <laughs> when you're on your deathbed, you know like, Oh, you have like two days left. How do you get? How do you live your life so that when that point comes, you're like, all right, fucking. Uh, have great you seen life. Psychopaths? No. Where they upload? It's like you can upload your consciousness, or yeah. like, like, let's say you can upload your consciousness into like uh, a virtual, mm -hmm, virtual thing. Would you do that? Yeah, I'm someone who wants to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I should have told about the end of psychopath. But um, yes. Uh, okay, no, that that's. Um, so Damn. you'd be like one of the people in Futurama, where like they upload like the presidents as like just the brain. Yeah, because the concept of dying like to me right now is terrifying. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine would be the same in fifty years, right? But you want to know a video that would fuck you up? What? So I saw a video on YouTube the other day, and it was like I can't remember what the exact video was called, but it was like a a, a philosopher reflects on his like. 90 years like he was like 90 years old and mm -hmm. it was like a philosopher reflecting on his like entire life right and you just saw you what well, you watch the video and you'd realize he'd figured nothing out and you're like fuck <laughs> oh i feel so bad i feel so fucking depressed right now like watching that one video put me in like an existential crisis for like a full full-on week oh my yeah. god yeah, don't watch it, actually. It's, it, it'll fuck you up. <laughs> like, was he ready? Was he like, yeah, I... I, I, I he wasn't ready. Oh, fuck. <laughs> at 90? You can't do anything at 90. But it's yeah. like, so how do you avoid being that guy? You know? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, because we're yeah. still relatively young. We can still go and do things. Yeah, I want to yeah. do the things so that when I'm 90, I'm not like that guy. Yeah. Just like, kind of like, 
distract myself as much as possible by just being, <laughs> just being busy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Up until my deathbed, I'll be like, hey guys, this is uh, my 9,000th stream ever. My 90,000th stream ever. This may be one of my last ones. Let's make it good for yeah. <laughs> Uh, just have like one of those like heartbeat monitors on streams <laughs> <laughs> so the audience just can see oh my god oh, that would be so bad <laughs> oh my god uh, that would be an, that would be an interesting stream yeah 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 that's uh it's not very concrete but it's it's more of a feeling. He wants to right. live a life without regrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you still got plenty of time to figure things out, man. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe immortality will be a thing in like when what by the time we get old, right? Yeah. Wait, how old are you, Giga? I'm 32. I, I'm 31. It's, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I'm 30. Yeah. So oh like, my god. Yeah, we're holy old shit. Old o- OTV in general, uh, we're, we're pretty old. Oh. Like I, we're all in like late 20s. Uh, yeah, the early thirties. Damn, I don't think I've ever been on a, like a podcast or a collaboration where everyone's over thirty. Damn, that, makes, that makes me feel yeah. so feel so good. That is yeah. so yeah. yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> Every time I, I've talked to someone, they're like, "Yeah, I'm 23, and like I have like fucking five million subscribers. I've like got my life sorted." I'm like, "Fuck you!" Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the whole content creation thing kind of became a thing like five years ago yeah, yeah. and we're, we're just old like it wasn't a thing when we were growing yeah, up so exactly exactly i'm sure we would have loved to start earlier but it's, it just came so late when oh now when i was young and the teacher asked me what i wanted to be a lot of people were just like we want to be astronauts or something like that was the aspiration yeah. right can you imagine in schools people are like i want to be a streamer i want yeah, to be a youtuber for sure people say that no they do and i'm just like fuck what if someone's like, i want to be giga oh that's my favorite youtuber <laughs> <laughs> Bro, why would you put that thought in my head, man? <laughs> These kids out there to say that, that's man. A te- that's such a terrifying thought. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It's it going to be the next generation. Because, like, when I think uh, old gen YouTubers, I think, like, Ryan Higa. Yeah. Um, that, like, we play Valorant with him all the time now. It's kind of weird just seeing, like, this guy who was one of the faces of YouTube just, like, now relaxing and chilling. And I would see new Asian like YouTubers. I'm like, fuck, are these the new OTV? Like, yeah. am I already on my way out? I just no. got here. <laughs> no way, no way. So thank you, Fishberry. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Oh, I came across a picture of you on Reddit the other day. Right. Um, it was a picture of you with an actress from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. the funniest thing, because when I saw that picture, it's like, oh, a fan met the guy from Trash Taste is now posting it on Reddit. <laughs> 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 I'm like, wait, no, I, I know this fan. She's an actress. And then it turns out your wife yeah, yeah. Uh, was the one who posted it. So yeah, yeah. Was it, so it was so random. That was a very random meeting. So mm. we were just like sitting down having lunch and we're like both like mega fans of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mm. And then like my wife just like looks over the corner and she was just like, is, is, is that the waitress? And I'm like, no, no, it can't be. <laughs> I look around and, and it's her. And like, it, it was such a surreal experience, right? Because like normally, like we've talked a lot on our podcast about how it feels to be a creator and like having fans come meet you and ask for a picture or something like that. And and I'm just like, just just do it. You know, don't worry about it too mm-hmm. much. We're nice people. Just don't be a dickhead. But like seeing her and wanting to get a picture with her, I like. I, I shit myself, you know. Mm-hmm. I had I had never been in a position where I've really, really wanted to ask for a picture, but I was terrified of just going up to her. Luckily, my wife was the one who had the big enough balls to like go up to her and ask for a picture because I, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it. I once saw my favorite fantasy like author, book author at a, a convention. And he was, I saw him sitting down like, like at a bar just drinking and I did not go up to him. I was like, I can't, I fucking can't. I know what it's like to get harassed fucking all the time. Yeah. And like you get, t- he had like, a, it was PAX and he had the black badge. Right. The badge given, I think it was the badge given to like the ultra talent, like the people who like are like serious people. And I'm like, I can ask, but like, nah, fucking, it's fucking good. Like I fucking, I'll be, I'll be in, another, in another life, you know? <laughs> but like, yeah, I was like, holy shit, that's him. Yeah. E- even the other day, uh, you played with, um, to Chrissy from Stranger Things. Yeah. And then I, you ended up bringing her and like the raid ended up all, all the way back to me. And I was like, who is the person? I'm like, is this the person from Stranger Things? It's weird how like the stuff is colliding nowadays. Yeah, like, yeah, right. For sure. I was like, wow, the actors, actresses just stream nowadays. It's yeah. just chill. Do you get to meet a lot of celebrities being here in LA? 
No, no. no. like more through gaming, because right. the way these uh, agents think, like, oh, you like games, right? Well, this is this thing called Twitch popping up. You should do it. <laughs> and God. like a lot of these uh, musicians would do it because musicians don't make that much money, apparently. Yeah. And right. you make a lot of money streaming. Yeah. Um, so I know a lot of musicians are into it just because um, I think when they when they're not touring, they got nothing to do with it. Yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. Play games. I know Logic Stream, T Pain. T Pain was a huge streamer for more for more than a year. Like when COVID happened, he just became a full time streamer. He Seriously? streamed almost every day. It was <laughs> sick. He was that was a, surreal. He's an insane streamer. Actually, right. he's so good. He's a perfect entertainer. Yeah, Damn. I don't think we meet a lot of mainstream celebrities though. I think living in LA means you have the option to meet people. Like yeah. it happens, yeah. but like it's never like you go out to meet them it's like yeah. oh like you end up randomly just seeing each other like cross like at a bar or like like some people introduce you and you come together at some place you didn't expect yeah i think it's very rare we like hey just, man this person's famous like this actor actress when they go meet them over here you know? right 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 yeah. yeah that's what i assumed it would be like because it just seems like la like, you know you'd always hear stories about being in la and just running into a celebrity but mm -hmm. that was like my first experience it, my first experience of it ever happening so that mm -hmm. was like a really surreal thing for me but like also i feel like i've been in, in la now for about a week i really miss walking i really oh, really yeah. really miss walking so much because because uh, in Japan it's like such a walkable country mm -hmm. and e even in the UK and I just miss like going out to like the convenience store just to get a get a get a coffee or something instead of just having to drive out so that that is one thing that I'm looking forward to <laughs> looking forward to when I go back to Japan yeah California or LA is the worst when it comes to that because it's like you have to drive 30 minutes to get to any neighborhood yeah and it's just like 10 stores five restaurants and you want to go to the next batch that's another 30 minute drive yeah uh, it's terrible here um so yeah i would say that's the worst thing about la the driving yeah but excited for japan anything you recommend us do while we're there um honestly like just eat a lot of food <laughs> oh all right, you already know okay so like it's it's funny because like a lot of people who i know who originally moved to japan they they were like weebs right they wanted to move to japan <laughs> because it's japan they wanted to see the anime they want to go to akihabara and, and everything like that and then pretty much everyone i know just got converted into becoming a foodie including me after moving to japan because there's just like so much good food there um whether you want like cheap food like the dirtier somewhere looks the better it tastes a lot of the times mm. but even like the higher end stuff as well because one thing i like love about japan is that japanese people really give a shit about their craft you know that they yes. they're the type of people who will spend ages just perfecting this one thing whether mm. it be food or like making a sword or any anything else there's like this big artisan culture in japan and that's why you get some of the best food in the world in Japan, in my opinion. And yeah, you can't really go wrong. Aside from that, are you guys gonna be in the Tokyo area at all? Yeah. Um, if you guys are comfortable, go to an onsen. <laughs> it's, uh, so it's a hot spring, right? So it's, it's intimidating at first, right? Which is why normally you get like locals to like take you out to an onsen, but you, you go out and you go to a public bath with your bros or whatever. And it's, it's intimidating at first because, you know, you gotta got to whip your dick out and you know, be naked with everyone like that. But it's once, once you do it, the tension just like immediately evaporates. It just becomes normal and it just becomes such a good bonding experience with your mates because because everyone's just relaxing. Everyone's just enjoying a bath and just having a chill time. And it's one of the most relaxing things you could do. And I highly recommend it if 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 you can get over that cultural barrier. So you've seen your friends' penises. Oh, many times, many times. <laughs> Me and Scar have not crossed that barrier. Yeah, <laughs> I've been to a Korean spa before. Right. I don't remember who I went with. Huh. Was was did you were was it the same kind of culture? In yeah, Korean it was spa? the same kind of culture. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. It still wasn't like a like a damn I want to go again kind of thing yeah but it was yeah. like a thing where I was like oh it's kind of interesting you yeah know? well if you ever if you ever come back and like because you're going in the summer right yes so I, I think it might be a better activity to do in the winter because it's when when it's like cold uh, it's literally like sometimes you go to like some places in northern Japan 
and like there's like outside hot springs and like the snow is falling. It's literally like a scene from an anime, right? That's because, what I would love to do. Because yes. what happens is like the snow falls down and then it hits the hot spring and then it evaporates. So you know that scene in an anime where you go in and like it's all steamy and like like the private parts like covered up by the steam. Uh-huh. It literally looks like that. <laughs> and it's one of the most uh. aesthetic things you could ever see in your life. Okay. Yeah. Highly recommend. Can we keep our underwear on? Huh? <laughs> no, you, you actually can't. You actually can't. Yeah. Uh, it's it's intimidating. It is. It is. But you, yeah. I mean, if 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 you are if you are open to it, because once you do it once, you'll realize how normal it feels. I guarantee. I guarantee it. Did it change your relationship with your mates after you did that? Yeah. It it was like a it was like a bonding experience, man. Because <laughs> there's like, because because you can't you, at, at that point you can't hide anything. Yeah. Right. Every, everything's laid bare. You know. Yeah. You know? It's, it's it's a nice bonding experience. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna change things. Fuck. Oh, we're gonna be different people after that trip. <laughs> like, do, do we have an onsen coming up? Just nod your head. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. We do have an onsen. It's part of our schedule. It looks right, like. right, awesome. We're going with like six dudes. I'm gonna look at six of my friends' penises. I've never seen any of my friends' penises. Fuck. All right. Well, we'll record a podcast right after, and yeah. we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Fuck. All right. All right. I think that's gonna do it for us. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thank you for having me on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And if you guys want to check out Trash Taste Number One anime podcast anime in the podcast. world right now please check them out they do great stuff i watch them a lot especially uh, when i want to learn about vtubing and hear you guys talk about vtubing it was super eye-opening yeah yeah so i mean it's it's weird yeah. to see vtubing become so mainstream now mm-hmm. in the streaming world because it was like a very very niche thing pre-pandemic so yeah thank you very much for having me on i hope i was okay oh, <laughs> it's, it's about, weird it's yeah. weird being on someone else's podcast not my own you <laughs> <Yes>. know <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and Thanks we'll watching. see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.